morning, church. Happy 4th of July weekend. Let's all stand as we begin worship this morning. We're gonna start off by a, with a song called Man of Sorrows. And believe it or not, that phrase was used to describe Jesus in Isaiah 53, and I'm gonna read that now. It says, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and pain, acquainted with grief. He was despised and we did not appreciate his worth or esteem him. He bore our griefs and he carried our sorrows and pain. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment for our well being fell on him, and by his stripes, by his wounds, we are healed. Amen. Thank God for that. Let's worship. i yeah. 
so much, Father. starts changing oh I'm gonna worship till I mean every word cause the weight I feel and the fear I'm facing doesn't change who you are or what you deserve I give you my blessing
cry worthy I never stop singing your praise. I never stop singing your praise. I never stop singing your praise. I never stop singing your praise in confusion. I never stop singing your praise in the valley. I never stop singing your praise. Amen. If you can just extend your hands forward. In a room like this, I know a lot of people come in here and you may be in the valley this week and it's hard to like sing praise when you're in the valley or you may be on the mountaintop. Or you may be somewhere in between where like you're starting to see the light, but it's not quite there yet. The Holy Spirit knows what you need today. And whether you're in the valley, you're in the mountaintop, or you're in pursuit, or you're in questions, God is pursuing you. And so as you extend your hands this morning, and as I pray, I want you just to say your own prayer. And maybe you don't even know what to pray. And maybe your prayer this morning is, God, my answer is yes. Whatever you want, whatever you're asking me to do, I don't even know about this God thing. I'm here and I'm just testing the waters to see what all these people are about. But Lord, I'm here. My answer is yes. And so Father, we thank you, Lord, that we come here this morning, that we once were lost, but now we're found. We once were blind, but now we see And it's because of the price that you paid on the cross that gives us the freedom that we can live in freedom. The Lord, so I pray for everyone in here today, no matter what they're going through, no matter what they brought in here, they are not captives to that. The God, the mission is so great. And what you called us to be and do as a church is so big that Lord, we don't want anything to hinder in our lives from what you want to do. And I thank you that, Lord, you're building your church. It's all because of what you did on that cross. And so as we continue to worship, I pray that's our prayer, that our answer to you is is yes. Whatever you have, whatever you want, whatever you're asking us, our response is yes. Let's continue to worship our Jesus this morning. Love, love. 
took my place. You took my place and laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days and then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting and life. today you would speak and minister our hearts and we can give you all the praise all the honor all the glory we love you in jesus name amen amen give god a hand this morning he's so good you guys can be seated and direct your attention towards the screen good morning everyone my name is cheyenne price and i'm one of the partners here at the church at clayton costumes i want to take a moment to say thank you for being here with us this morning if you're visiting with us today, we want to extend a special welcome to you and let you know that we have a gift for you to say thank you for spending your Sunday morning with us. If you can please fill out a Connect card, they're either attached to your bulletin or in the seat back in front of you. Drop that off at the welcome desk and you can pick up your gift there. If you're here because you call Clayton Crossings your church home, thank you for coming this morning. You can use the Connect card as well for any prayer requests you may have. You can fill those out and drop them in the black box at the back of the auditorium as you leave this morning. Next weekend is a busy one for our church. Make sure you mark your calendar so you don't miss out on these exciting events. Saturday, July 8th, we have Crossings Men's Breakfast at 9 a.m. 
and our blood drive from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Crossings Men, we hope you'll join your brothers in Christ for a delicious breakfast, fellowship, and devotion. This event is free to attend, and you do not have to register. Just come on out. After our men's breakfast, we'll have our next blood drive right here in our parking lot. All blood types are welcome to donate, and you will be given an incentive for your donation. You don't have to pre-register to donate blood, but if you'd like to reserve a time slot, you can do so at claytoncrossings.com slash events. Sign up today and help save a life. Our next steps class is quickly approaching. We'll be meeting Sunday, July 9th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Next Steps is a class for anyone who wants to learn more about the history of our church and what we believe. People who attend Next Steps will also meet our staff and elder teams and have the opportunity to become a church partner. You do need to register for Next Steps, but registration is free and we'll even give you breakfast for attending. You can register at claytoncrossings.com slash events. Our next starting points class will be starting next Sunday as well. If you have questions about the Christian faith, you're a new Christian, or you're returning to church for the first time in years, Starting Point is a great place to start your faith journey. It's an eight-week conversational small group environment where you can explore faith and experience community. Starting Point's class will meet Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. here at the church from July 9th to August 27th. If you're interested in signing up for Starting Points, you can do so at claytoncrossings.com slash events, but you have to sign up by July 5th to attend. The only reason we are able to do whatever it takes to help people find and follow Jesus is because of your partnership. Thank you for partnering with us financially and for your faithfulness in that. There are a few ways you can give. You can give on our website at claytoncrossings.com slash give. You can scan one of the QR codes in your bulletin or on the screen, or you can give by dropping an offering in one of the black boxes at the back of the auditorium on your way out. Again, thank you so much for being a part of helping us spread the gospel to others. We'll see you next Sunday. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Clayton Crossings. I'm so glad that you took time out of your amazing weekend that you're going to have uh, in 4th of July weekend to be here. Maybe you're out of town and you're just tuning in or you're catching us later in the week. Welcome. We're so glad you're here, especially if you're visiting with us. We do want to spend a, a exp- exp- <laughs> give a, a special warm welcome to you. If uh, you're here for the first time and whether you're visiting with a family or you've checked us out and you said, hey, I want to check out and see what that church is all about. Well, you've caught us in the beginnings of a summer series called Asking for a Friend. And these next two weeks are going to deal with missions. And you think, oh, great. Uh, I came at the wrong weeks. No, you came at the right weeks because these are going to be pivotal in the life of our church because I really want us to understand the importance of missions. And so I really want you to, to, to get this. And so today we have a special speaker with us. But before we introduce him, I want to tell you how excited I am to introduce to you this whole thing of missions. Some of you are thinking, missions, what? Don't you have to have a special calling? Don't you? Isn't these people that go to Africa and things like that? Well, some are, but, but God has something that he wants for all of us to participate in. So when you came to Christ, I bet you didn't know this, but you're supposed to live like a missionary. And uh, whether that's here in Clayton or whether that's uh, wherever your, your place is of influence, you're to reach people. And then God says you're to go to the uttermost part of the world. So we're going to answer questions like this from this series. Whose responsibility is it to reach people around the world? Is it my responsibility? What is my responsibility in all of this, especially in missions? And so over the next two weeks, we're going to talk about those things. And so I want you guys to understand that. Did you know that Clayton Crossings is here because of missions? Because someone 20 years ago said, hey, I want to plan a different type of church right here in the heart of Clayton and reach people for Jesus. That was as a result of somebody for missions. They took a group of people from a couple different churches and resources, and they pulled it together. And then they, people funded that and enabled it for it, that to happen for us to be able to be here. And so guess what we're called to do? To do the exact same thing in other places, whether that's in Johnson County and beyond uh, the, the four walls of this church and around the world. 
And so I want to introduce you to a way that I think we're going to be able to get this done. I'm going to introduce you today called the missions box. And on it, it just simply says for Clayton, for the world. One of our goals is to have 10% of our budget towards missions. But I want to blow away past that because this would be like extended time on your video games. All right. And so uh, what we're asking for every family to do is to take one of these boxes. They're in, located in the back of the auditorium in a nice pyramid. So I need some of you to destroy the pyramid. Not like jump style, all right, but just grab one as a family. And what you're going to do, and this is above your tithes and offerings, uh, you're going to pray and ask God to say, God, how would you provide this uniquely for our family? How would you provide? And so above your tithes, above your offerings, and I think it's going to do two things for you. Number one, it's going to grow your faith because you're going to see God provide in ways, whether it's through a lemonade stand or through a find and change on the ground or some weird way that God's going to provide. And we want you to fill this up to the tune of about $400. Now there's a QR code if you're going, I'm not into that, but here's what I want it to do. Number two, I want it to grow your faith. Number one, I really do. I think this is going to be a way that you're going to see God provide that you're going to go. I had no idea if I trusted God for that, that he would fill this box with $400. And then I want to hear the stories of how that happened, because I believe there's going to be a lot of stories. And then secondly, I think it's going to grow your concern for missions because you're going to be vested in it. And I would love to see it. David's got stories and stories. They raise money through the Timothy initiative, through this concept as well, and other churches raise their missions and things like that. And he's going to tell you numbers that are going to make your head spin about how God provides in ways that are just unbelievable. And then I believe it's going to expand our influence, not only in Clayton and Johnson County, but around the world as a result of filling these boxes. So I want to encourage you over the next two weeks, you're going to hear a lot about these. And uh, I really want you to really grab that. So grab a box, pray how God would fill that. So I want you to go home and take it and pray. Just, I don't want you to be like, I'll start stuffing money in. God, how would you want to fill this box? You guys take it home as a family, something to be able to pray around and then take it home and do that. Um, And then uh, don't take the money out of your budget or regular tithes and offerings. Uh, The money's going to come through unexpected income, special blessings, uh, or however you see God provide. Um, Then we'll collect the boxes late fall. So you don't have to bring them in next week, next month, but just see what God does as you fill those up. And then we're going to have an incredible party about how God's provided and the amount that he's provided and set some goals. And every cent that you put in here is going to go towards planting churches, doing things, bringing people, creating things that we didn't think were possible, Uh, whether it's in Cuba that we already partner with or Toronto uh, or here in Johnson County with I Choose Pregnancy Center and others. I want Clayton Crossings to be a church on mission uh, and uh, and really following the heartbeat of God and to help us kind of realize that and understand and wrap our minds around God's heart for people and heart for Johnson County and around the world is uh, a speaker that I'm having today by the name of Dr. David Nelms. Dr. David Nelms is the founder and president of the Timothy Initiative. And I went down to a conference and, and got connected to these, and their home offices are right here in Raleigh, and I had no idea. But got connected to these guys, and the, here's the one thing that really stuck out to me. And a lot of times we say, you know, the, the word of God's very clear saying, hey, when everybody's heard the gospel, then Jesus returns. And we always say, oh, well, we'll just send people to Uganda. We'll send people to this. They have an actual strategy to reach every person on the globe. I've never seen anything like it. So I'm excited to introduce David. His wife, Loretta, is here as well. And uh, David's going to come and, uh, and talk about not just the Timothy initiative, but take God's word and explain to us why missions is our responsibility. And uh, I'm trusting that God's going to do great things in your heart and through this church. So let's give David Nelms a warm Clayton Crossing. Loretta, would you stand as well to welcome you guys? I'm so excited to be here with you guys, with Loretta. We are working on 46 years. It'll be 46 years in just a couple of months. We actually went to... uh, the UK last summer for our 50th anniversary 
Uh, you say, well, you haven't been married 50 years yet. No, but I wanted to make sure I got that trip in, okay? I didn't want to take any chances. So anyway, a couple months off 46, we live on the other side of town, Briar Creek, if you know where that is. I met your pastor, as he said a few months ago, fell in love with them. This place is exciting. I love everything about it. Uh, your music, by the way, your worship time, outstanding, just outstanding. Uh, your, your crew, everybody, uh, Jim and David and the rest of you, I don't remember all the names, but you've all been so helpful. Sally, I think, and Randy. Randy, he's a character. And just, just everything. I like your little fountain out there, baptismal fountain, I think it is. Just every, you even have a door that opens without you having to push it. It's an automatic door out there. And I don't see those in a lot of churches. So I just love everything about this place. I've got a lot to share with you. I want to begin with a video that gives you kind of the flavor of who we are and what we do. And so watch this video. Then I'm going to start uh, sharing some with you. Thank you. That last line is the most important part of the video. People just like you and me can do the same thing, and we can do it right here. We make disciples who make disciples, some of whom in turn plant churches that plant churches. We work primarily among your Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, and animist parts of the world, among what missiologists refer to as unreached people groups. And without spending a lot of time on getting into the technical definition of what a UPG, an unreached people group is, basically it means you can be born, you can live your life, you can die, and you can go into eternity lost without ever even having heard the very name of Jesus Christ. We have actually planted churches in over 1,400 different unreached people group ethnicities, over 1,400 of them, about 20% of, the, of them in the world. To illustrate it better, though, if this worship center was a people group, if you guys represented a specific ethnicity, 
And if every single chair represented a village, there would be churches in the first couple of rows over here, the first couple of uh, sets of villages there. The rest of these villages, there would be no churches. You guys in that fifth row back, eighth row back over there, you would probably hear about Jesus from these people. You guys might, maybe. The rest of you, you're going to be born, you're going to live your life, you're going to die, and you're going to go into eternity without ever even having known who he was. It's not so much that you reject him, you don't know about him. And you don't know about him because nobody's ever told you. In our system, what we do is we train what we call Timothys. We don't train pastors. We train lay people, people like you. Do you remember when Jesus called the 12 apostles? All 12 of them were were regular, normal tent makers. They were people that had jobs. They were people that, they were not seminary type grads like myself. They were just regular, normal followers of Christ. And that's who we train. We train regular, normal people to go out and share their story where they live, work, study, shop, and play. As people come to Christ, they begin discipling them. And pretty soon those new believers gather together their friends, their oikos, their friends their family, and pretty soon a little church has sprung up. But we use a little bit different system. We don't pay salaries. We don't build buildings. We don't send people off to seminary. The church is the seminary. The church is where we equip people to do the work of the ministry. And we don't build buildings because where we work in many places, they'll get burnt down or blown up anyway. So we use our house or under a tree or in a cave or on a rooftop or in an alley or office or wherever we can find. So we don't pay salaries. We train tent makers. We don't build buildings. We don't have to send folks to seminary. And so we've got it down to where we can, we can plant a church for about 400 bucks. That's what those boxes are about. About 400 bucks, you can plant a church. To graduate, the church planter, we call, we call the church planter the Timothy. The Timothy has to plant a church, raise up two of his own Timothys. We call Timothy's Timothy Titus. It's just the next generation. And each church takes care of a widow or an orphan in some significant way. Let me show you a few pictures. It'll give you a better idea of what we're talking about. Uh, you're looking at a Timothy there, the guy on the left, the tall guy is a Timothy. He's a businessman. I happen to know him. The guy on the right is his pastor. We call him the Paul. That line of people being baptized there are the new converts that the Timothy, the guy on the left, led to the Lord in one year's time. Pastor Andre, somebody in the United States may have been here in Raleigh, sat down and wrote out a check and uh, 400 bucks, and that's the fruit of it from one year. Look at the next picture. The, uh, this is a gal that was standing in that baptismal line. Her name is Kali, 83 years old. She, she heard about Jesus from that Timothy and she gave her heart to the Lord. Look, look at her very closely. She was not rejecting Jesus. She didn't know who he was. Do you know why she didn't know who he was? Nobody had ever told her. That's why. So we talk about planting churches. This is what we're talking about here. Look at the next slide. Let's move to Africa. Here you have a lady that's even older. She's 90 years old, or she was when we took this picture. Her name is Rhoda. Now, Rhoda looks sweet and like she wouldn't hurt a soul. She looks so uh, frail and just just, uh, almost helpless. But let me tell you something. That's the meanest old woman on the face of the earth. She, uh, I'm from Georgia. We'd, call, we'd say about her, she's meaner than a junkyard dog. She's just mean, okay? She's been an illegal bootlegger her entire life. The Timothy came into her little village, never been a church there. Uh, Rhoda's granddaughter came to Christ, and we teach our new believers, as soon as Almighty God comes to live inside of you, why do you want to keep it a secret? Go tell somebody. Tell somebody that very day. And so the Timothy looked at the granddaughter and said, who do you know that really needs Jesus? And the first one that came to granddaughter's mind was mean old Grandma Rhoda. So she went to see Grandma Rhoda, told her about Jesus. Rhoda accepted Jesus on the spot. You see, she wasn't rejecting Christ. She didn't know who he was. Do you know why she didn't know who he was? Nobody had ever told her. Rhoda gets saved on the spot. Rhoda says, what do I do next? Granddaughter says, I don't know. I've only been a Christian for like three hours, but I think, 
I heard him say something about getting baptized. And Rhoda said, what's that? She said, I don't know. I'm new at this, but I think they dunk you in the water. And so Rhoda said, I want to get baptized right now. And granddaughter said, you can't get baptized right now. You've got to wait till next, next week, next Sunday. And Rhoda said, I don't want to wait till next Sunday. I want to do it right now. And if I was 90 years old, I wouldn't want to wait till next Sunday either. And so look at the next slide. They, they, they call for the Timothy, that's him in the white shirt. And they took Rhoda out and they baptized baptized are right on the spot. Can somebody say amen? That's, that's what we're talking about right there. Look at the next slide. Uh, this, this is uh, what we call a tree church. Listen, even people from Raleigh, Durham can figure out why we call it a tree church, okay? They meet under a tree. The whole village gets saved. Andre, the whole village, everybody. I've seen it so many times. They weren't rejecting Jesus. They don't know who he is. Somebody tell me why they don't know. Nobody's ever, nobody's ever told them. The whole village comes to Christ. Look at the next slide. This is uh, one of the early churches we planted in an Asian country. The reason I took the picture was after six and a half years, they'd already started 29 churches. See the young man with a guitar on the front left? That's a Timothy. There were eight Timothys there that day being trained in that church to start eight more churches. Each of the eight Timothys had their two Tituses there. That's 16 more, 24 people in that. And that crowd were being trained to be disciple makers slash church planters. And that's after planting a church every three and a half months for the last uh, six and a half years. You see, we're not planting churches. We're planting churches that plant churches that plant churches that plant churches. Multiplication will always trump addition, always, no matter what. Look at the next slide. Every single church takes care of an orphan or a widow. I came across this little fella in a voodoo village in West Africa, and he just broke my heart. The picture doesn't do it justice. I don't think the little fella had ever had a bath in his life. You say, where, where, where are the little orphan boys and girls like that? Where, where, do, where do they get their food? They get to eat the scraps that the dogs leave behind. You say, where do they sleep? Under a tree, under somebody's, uh, under somebody's porch. What do they do when they're sick? They just suffer. You say, David, are you trying to make us feel bad? Probably. I probably am. One of your men was telling me, this, speaking this morning about how much freedom we have here. It's July 4th weekend, how we maybe, at least me, I sometimes take for granted what I've got, what God's given me. Let me tell you something. There are millions and millions and millions of those little fellows all over the world. And every time we start a church... That church says we're going to find an orphan, we're going to find a widow in our community, and we as a church family, we are going to take care of them. And so that's kind of the idea of what we do. I think there may be one more slide, is there? Yeah, we've got a prayer team. I'm going to be standing right out in the lobby as you exit this door right here to the right. I'll be there. I've got a prayer card. We send out prayer requests every month and we just ask that you pray over them and then delete the email. Don't ever, don't ever post it on social media. It'll get people in trouble. But if you'd be willing to take a couple of minutes during your month and pray, if you'll just see me as you walk out the door, I'll be out there and it'll take you a moment to fill out the card. You can leave it behind. And what we need, uh, we're so excited to, to, to begin a partnership with you guys. And we're, I'm super excited about those little boxes. But what we really need is the prayer. We need your prayers. Uh, listen, last, one month ago, I woke up on a Sunday morning. I was somewhere speaking and I looked at my WhatsApp. Hundreds, hundreds of churches in one of the countries we're in had been burnt to the ground that night. Hundreds of them. Dozens of them were churches that we had started. We recently had a a a. a uh, uh, a, uh, a lady, Timothy, in one of our North African countries who was out witnessing, talking to people about Jesus. When her husband found out what she was doing, he beat her to death. He's beat her to death. I was talking to one of our leaders in a Southeast Asian country, a communist country. I asked him, how many times have you been to jail for preaching the gospel? He said, I, he said, I stopped counting after 20 after 20 times. This stuff is really happening, ladies and gentlemen. It's happening every day. We don't hear about it here in the States, but it's happening. And the only solution is prayer. 
We must have prayer. So I ask you, if you will, to get on the team. I want to talk to you this morning on the subject of urgency. Urgency. It is my prayer that somebody leaves here today with a sense of urgency. I pray that somebody leaves here today and says, you know what? Missions is not just for that, that career missionary. Missions is, I am a missionary, as Pastor Andre said, and I, I, may, I can up my game a little bit. I can accelerate things a little bit. I hope somebody leaves here today with a sense of urgency saying, I've got to do something. I've, I know I can reach more people than I've been reaching. I want to begin with a passage that you all know by heart. Your children know it by heart. John 3, 16 and John 3, 17, for God so loved the, who does God so love? He so loved the, the world. How much did he so love the world? So much that he gave his only son, that's Jesus, that whoever, whoever out in that world believes in him, places their trust in him, should not perish. That's John's way of saying dying lost and spending eternity in a place called hell. Whoever believes in Jesus should not perish, but have eternal life. Now look at the next verse, verse 17. For, that's a connecting word, same context, same Jesus talking to the same Nicodemus, same setting, same everything, same subject here. For God did not send his son, Jesus, into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. There's one word in this passage, the most famous verse in the Bible and the one that follows it, that's repeated four times. It is the word what? You tell me the word world. Whenever you're studying through the Bible, it's always good to look for a key word as you're studying. Your eyes, train your eyes to zero in on that key word. You say, how do you know if it's a key word? Well, one way you know if, it's, if the same word is repeated over and over and over and over again in a brief text, pretty good idea. That's a, that's a key word. When I look at John 3.16 and John 3.17, I'm reminded, yes, God loves me. I'm so glad he does. Yes, God loves uh, Raleigh, Durham, uh, this area here. Yes, God loves North Carolina. Yes, God loves the United States and has shed his grace upon us. But he not only loves us, he loves the world. Jesus not only died for me, he died for the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it just seems reasonable to me that somebody ought to tell the world that there is a creator God who loves them, who sacrificed, who slaughtered, Isaiah 53, who slaughtered his one and only begotten son so that they could be saved. It seems reasonable to me somebody ought to tell the world, because I'm standing here today to tell you something, they don't know. By the billions they don't know. And the reason they don't know, nobody has ever told them. Two truths this morning. Truth number one, the world is big. The world is very big. We recently passed 8 billion people on this planet. Depending upon how you define the word city, believe it or not, there's multiple ways to define it. But depending upon your definition, the United States only has one of the 20 largest cities in the world, New York City. And it's not even in the top 10. I think it's number 11 or 12. I was Googling the population of states the other day. If you take Florida and Texas, other than California, those are the two most populous states in the United States. If you take Florida and Texas and, and combine their population, it's around 52, 53 million people. We work in two cities in Asia, two cities that the combined population of the metro area is over 53 million people. Two cities with more people than all of Texas and all of Florida combined. The world is big. Truth number two, the world is lost. 70% of the world, seven out of 10 people will tell you, I am not a follower of Jesus Christ. Of the 3 billion that claim to be followers of Christ, that includes everything. 
That includes cults. That includes everything. Some of those do not really know Christ, but set them aside. Of the, of the 8 billion people in the world, out of the 8 billion people on the face of this earth, 5.5 billion of them will tell you, I am not a follower of Christ. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Hindu. I'm a Buddhist. I'm an atheist. I'm a, I'm a whatever. And many of those have yet to even hear his name. Where we work, I'll be taking a trip in a couple of weeks. Where we work, I make my, I land, I make my way through immigration. I walk outside to find a ride to the hotel. I get, I get a ride. And if the guy can speak English, he'll say, uh, where are you from? I'll say, I'm from the States. He'll say, uh, what kind of work are you in? I'll say, I'm a pastor. Oftentimes he will then ask, what's a pastor? I'll say, well, he's a guy that works at a place called a church. He'll then ask, what's a church? I'll say, well, the church is a place where that pastor teaches people from a book called the Bible. You'll never guess what his next question is. What's a Bible? And I'll say, well, the Bible is this book where they wrote down the message that came out of the mouth of the creator of the heavens and the earth, the God that made you and that made your beautiful country. And in the, the pages of that book, he tells us how he loves us so much that he sent his one and only son, whose name is Jesus, to die on a cross to pay for our sins. And how that through believing in him, putting our trust in him, our sins can be forgiven, our guilt removed, the shackles that, that bind us are released and we can have joy and peace and experience God's love in this life and we can talk to him and hear his voice deep within and when we die we get to leave this old messed up world and we get to go and live with him you won't believe this in his very house and his streets are made of gold and the front gate is a big pearl and there's no sorrow and there's no sickness and there's no suffering and there's no, there's no disasters of any kind. And about that time, I'll notice his eyes are real big and he'll ask, do you have one of those Bibles? I'd like to see it myself. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is big. The world is lost. So many places have no access to the gospel. You see, there's two issues. There's the issue of need and the issue of access. There's a need for Jesus everywhere. There's a need for Jesus in this room this morning. But there are other, there's another issue, the issue of access. Some places have such limited access to the gospel. Again, in some places, there's literally no access. They're born, they live, they die, and they go into eternity lost. I mentioned to you that I'm from Atlanta, uh, birth of uh, the headquarters of Coca-Cola. I love Coca-Cola. I, uh, I just read this week where uh, drinking Diet Coke will uh, give you cancer. So I know how I'm going to die, Andre. Uh, I, 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 I've had too many of them, okay? But I like everything Coca-Cola. I like Sprite. I even like Fresco, okay? Love Diet Coke. Love Coke Zero. But... Uh, in fact, I, the way I was raised, Pepsi was a four-letter word, okay? Uh, we, it, we were all Coke, nothing else. But Coke has done something that drives me crazy. You can see the slide. I don't know how they did it, but a bunch of men, women, sitting around a board table downtown Atlanta, Georgia, about 100, 150 years ago, figured out how to get their product to the ends of the earth. I can tell you I've ministered in some 70 different countries, I've been places where the villages don't have a name. I mean, you, you take the main road to the secondary road to the path, and then you just start walking. You got to cross little rivers and the forests and the jungles, and finally you'll find 10 little huts there, 10 little straw huts, and they won't have any electricity, but there'll be two old men sitting under a tree drinking a Coca-Cola. I, I don't know how they've done it, but somehow Coca-Cola, listen to me, Coca-Cola has accomplished in 150 years for the love of money what the church of Jesus Christ has yet to accomplish in 2,000 years for the love of Almighty God and for the love of lost souls. I don't know how they've done it, but they have done it. I know the Great Commission can be accomplished, that is getting the gospel to everybody everywhere. I know it can be done because Coca-Cola has basically already done it. Thousands of villages, tens of thousands of villages across the world with no gospel witness. I'm talking about places like the Congo and Indonesia and Nepal and Pakistan and Sri Lanka and Sudan and Thailand and Togo and Vietnam. 
India alone has over 300,000 villages that have never had a church of any kind. No church, nothing. Not a Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall, nothing. There's never been one there. There's only a little over 300,000 churches in the United States. Every time you have driven by a church building in your life, there is a corresponding village in India that has never had a church at all. They're not rejecting Jesus. They don't, are you hearing me? They don't know who he is. Why don't they know who he is? Nobody has what? Ever told them. North Africa, the Middle East, Sub-Sahara Africa, Senegal to Somalia, all your stand countries of Central Asia, Southeast Asia, the, the, the maybe billions of people in Southeast Asia, the Far East, China, all the islands of the sea, Europe is now post-Christian. The USA has become post-rational, not just post-Christian, but post-rational. Most Christ followers have no idea what the Great Commission is. Your pastor gets it. Jesus gave us a commission. He said, take the gospel to everybody, every people, every place. Do it. Get the gospel out. That's the Great Commission. Most, most Christ followers in the United States don't even know what the Great Commission is. Those that do know what it is do not see it as their responsibility, personal responsibility. They would say that's the church's job. Are y'all listening? Question for you. Who is the church? Come on, talk to me. Who's the church? Yeah, you are. Is the church that pole right there? What about that pole? What about this podium here? Is the church this microphone? Come on, talk to me. Is the church this platform? Is it this building? Is it that door out there that just magically opens when you get close to it? Is that the church? No, you're the church. You say, well, David, Jesus gave the great commission to the church. Well, who is the church? We are. If you hear nothing else I say this morning, hear this. It is your personal responsibility as a follower of Jesus Christ to spread the good news gospel here, near, and far. You say, David, well, how, how do I do that? How can my family, how can our church get involved? Well, we must tell the world and we must do so with a sense of urgency. You say, why urgency, David? Because one point eight people per second leave this world and enter eternity without Christ. If you know your Bible, you know what that means for them. One point eight every second. It's 155,000 people every day. I think Clayton has around 25,000 people. Is that about right? If your population is 25,000 here, that's six Claytons every single day that perish. God sent his one and only in this world so that they should not perish, but they are perishing by the tens of thousands every single day. By the time you gather here next Sunday for your second missionary uh, message emphasis, it will be over one million people from this moment right here till this time next week, over one million people would have perished. That's why we must do what we're going to do with a sense of urgency. You say, David, specifically, what can we do? Well, first of all, we can all give we can all give, and your pastor has got your boxes in the back. Don't, don't leave here today without taking one. If you've got several kids, take two or three. Let the children get involved. Go home and do what Pastor Andre said. Pray over those little boxes and ask God to, to provide income other and above what you already have. Just ask God to do it, to, sh- to show you how great he is. And then just sit back and watch in amazement as he does it. I think you'll be amazed. You say, David... Did I hear right? $400 starts a church. That little box won't hold $400. Listen, it will if you put a check in it, amen? It'll hold $40,000. You can plant 100 churches. And there's probably somebody here that could do that. You say, David, what can we do to get the gospel to the whole world? We can give your church together as a church family. You've got a project here. You guys can impact the world here, near, and far. 
the unreached world. I would say to you, give and be strategic in your giving on top of that. This is important. Be strategic. That unreached part of the world, the unreached people groups makes up 41, 42% of the world. But according to the Joshua Project, IMB and all the other experts, barely 1% of missionary giving goes to the 41, 42% of the world that is classified as unreached. You say, David, how much should I give? Here's the answer to that question. Listen very closely. Ask your father. Get, take that box home. Get on your knees. Ask your heavenly father. Father, what do you want my part to be? And whatever he tells you, that's what you do. You say, David, how can we get the gospel out? We can pray. Number two, we can make disciples right here at home. You see, the Great Commission starts not around the world, but across the street. It starts where you are, where you live, where you work, where you study, where you shop, where you play. Everywhere you go this week, there are going to be people that do not know Jesus. They don't have a relationship with him. Almighty God has allowed your path to cross them for a reason. Let God use you. Let God use you. You, can, you, you say, how do I get the gospel out? You can give, you can, you can make disciples right here, and finally, you can pray. You can pray. That's what our prayer cards are about. You can pray. Oh, we must pray. Let me close by showing you a couple of pictures. Look at uh, this first one. If you guys want to put it up for me, there we go. Go ahead, get to the next slide, if you would. This is a Timothy in a Southeast Asian country, a communist country. The authorities came and said, we're gonna, we're taking your pig, we're confiscating your pig because you won't quit talking about Jesus. If we gotta come again, we're gonna take your house. You say, uh, what can we do for our brother? We can pray for him. Look at the next slide, the next mountain over along the China border, skin disease. You say, uh, has he been to the doctor? You ever been to the mountains along the Chinese border? There's no hospitals there. There's no doctors, no clinics, no medicine. You say, what, are they, what do our brothers and sisters do when they get sick? They suffer. They suffer. You say, what can we do for our brother here? We can pray for him. We can pray for him. Look at the next slide. This is a, a, a Muslim country. Church ended one morning. This gentleman walked outside. A suicide car drove up, blew up the whole church. 32 people. He was dead on arrival at the hospital. He happened to be the uncle of one of our leaders in this particular country. It's about 95% Muslim. They just blew up 30-something Christians. Listen, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. You say, what can... His, his nephew called me just weeping. Dr. David, they killed my uncle. They killed my uncle. You say, David, what can we do? We can pray. Ladies, we're not just talking about heaven and hell. This is, this is serious stuff here. Look at the next slide. This lady uh, along the, uh, uh, in the Himalayas along the Tibetan border, earthquake. She realized her kid was, oh, she went running up the hill to grab her child. The roof collapsed. She covered her child, crushed, crawled out of the rubbish or out of the rubble and lay there on the ground for several days. There was no, the roads were destroyed. By the time they got her to a hospital, they had to amputate both of her legs above the knee. That's why she's all covered up. Her little baby ended up with a broken leg. You say, David, what can we do for our sister? We can pray. We can pray. Will you pray? Come see me. Will you pray? I think I've run out of time, so I want to close by showing you a video. The video, Andre, maybe one day you'll go to this country with me. It's a Hindu temple. These are bodies being cremated. If you look real close, you can see the feet stuck out of the right side. <clears throat> we'll sit on those steps over there on the other side of that so-called holy river and we'll watch. These platforms are all up and down this river. And this goes on day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, century after century, over a thousand years at this one temple. Sometimes little boys will get down in the water and fish out the jewelry because they sometimes cremate them with the jewelry on. This is just one of thousands and thousands of temples just like it. This has been going on for over a thousand years in this one location. And I sit on those steps over there and I watch the, the relatives are over here on the side. They're weeping. The fire usually starts right in the mouth. And they weep and they wail as those who, they sorrow as those with no hope. 
Are you hearing me? They sorrow as those with no hope. They know they're never going to see their loved one again. And they weep. And I sit on those steps across that river. And I sit there, and what always comes to my mind is I'm watching them push the, the, the ashes into that river. What always comes to my mind are these words, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world through him might be saved. And then it, I think to myself, somebody needs to tell these people because they don't know. Guess who the somebody is? Today, I pray that you'll leave this place with a sense of urgency. I pray you'll let God use you. Oh, he wants to use every one of you. But you know, there may be someone in this room today, you're not sure about your own salvation. You, if, I mean, if you die today, you're not sure where you're going to go. We're going to have a couple of songs and then we're going to be dismissed. But Pastor Andre is going to be over by this cross. And I believe one of your elders or someone over here. Come up and see them. God brought you here today for a reason. Just ask yourself this question right now. Am I positive that I'm part of the family of God, that my sins are forgiven, that heaven is my eternal home? If the answer to those questions is anything other than an absolute yes, see one of these guys. If you need to pray about something, maybe God's calling you to be a missionary. Come see one of them. Let them pray with you. Let them help you. Such a great honor to be here today. I love you guys. Thank you, Father. Bless these dear people. Thank you for what you're doing here. Lord, don't let it stop, please. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Nelms, for that incredible word. Let's all stand, and as we respond, just real quick, we're going to sing a, call, a song called Send Me. And I was thinking as he was speaking, about 12 years ago, God changed my wife and I's life. And um, I prayed a prayer.
today the beauty of that is when we surrender all and we all individually say here am I send me I believe that the church is an unstoppable movement when we are united and all mission together amen amen so let's put our hands together as we sing about an unstoppable God that causes and continues to build his church let's put our hands together we've got a lot of celebration we have to do today God who loves us, who's pursuing us.
confidence in God that he can do anything in and through your lives. You're dismissed. We'll see you next week. Have a happy fourth.